Hey everybody, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can paint this fabulous abstract with palette knives. On the mic is my husband, John. Hi guys. And I'm going to really be explaining this for beginners, so if you've been curious about palette knives but needed to know more before you could jump in, I'm going to be explaining all of the things that a really new painter needs to know, but hopefully I'm going to give a couple tips that some of you more experienced painters will find really enjoyable. Now I am doing this on a 9 by 12 canvas. It is a canvas board and we like to put wishes on there and I do have two wishes today. I have a wish um, for a mother I just met and she has a son who was in an accident and I'm just wishing that they have healing and support through this time and that the very best possible things work out for them at all times. And the other wish that I have is that uh, we find as a community and as a species uh, compassion and understanding and effective treatments for people who are suffering with mental illness and that we see that the stigma of that just goes away and we all just accept that we're people doing the very best that we can on any given day. Who's ready to look at materials? Boy, I am. Are you ready to look at materials? I, I like the materials. All right, so I have a palette over here with some colors. I have Indian yellow, titanium white. I have some nice teal, some phthalo blue, docks purple, and quinacridone magenta. And I have assorted palette knives. This knife here that you see, if you're thinking of palette knives, this would often be referred to as a multi-angle palette knife. It has the little curve in, and that's very similar to the Bob Ross specialty knife that he had. These are often referred to as spatulas. This is a long diamond. These are short diamonds. And this here sometimes is referred to as a blade. Each of these creates different marks. We're mostly going to be working with our diamond heads. Now, hopefully that just makes it a little bit easier if you've never seen it before. Like, what the heck is this? The other thing I want you to think about is these here are the edges, and this is the bottom. This is where we do all our painting. We can add paint and we can subtract paint. And that's how these tools work together to make art. Now I have picked colors that give me a great deal of joy, but I have to tell you if there's a color that you don't have in this palette or you like different colors and you're very familiar with color mixing, you should just be able to do what you want. The other thing I want to tell you is that in this, especially if you're new, this is a big deal for you new painters. Remember that when you're formulating whether you have succeeded or failed at a painting, Actually, that is from you. No one else outside of you can tell you if you won or succeeded. It is you placing judgment on your painting. So sit and be mindful if you start experiencing those feelings and ask yourself, am I setting forth a bunch of conditions that I need to achieve to feel good about my art? And are those conditions even reasonable? And if you find that maybe you're saying, oh, I love this artist so much and I want to paint just like them, back those up a little bit and set smaller, more achievable goals like today, I'm going to mix color like a boss. Or today, I'm going to load this palette knife like nobody has loaded a palette knife before. Keep it manageable and reasonable so that during your art journey, as you're learning to build up art skills, you're not saying that today to be a good artist, you have to have all the skills and all the abilities right now, right this minute as a brand new person, because that's just not how art works. Artists are developed over time. All right, that said, I'm super ready to get into this. I've been wanting to do this video for a while. This is exciting. I'm kind of excited too. So here I've got my diamond head palette knife, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you about a load. I'm going to start with my white. And what I'm doing here, if you see, is I'm loading on the left, wait, right side <laughs> of the blade. I'm so cool till I get right or left. The right side of this blade. And I'm going to grab, as you see, from the outer little paint plop, a little bit of the yellow. See, I haven't really mixed it. Yeah. This is going to be kind of key into this process. If I li line everything to the right side of the blade, then in general, I'm going to very softly stroke my palette knife towards the left. So if I load right, I kind of go left. If you don't know that, that can feel really challenging. Look at all that white paint I put on there. One of the challenges that beginners face, I think, with palette knife painting is that it uses a lot of paint because it's all about texture. <laughs> I'm going to keep doing this. And you're going to see me go through a lot of white. Yeah. Now, I, you can palette knife with any acrylic paint, but I would suggest that you at least do a heavy body because craft paint is self-leveling. It's designed to get rid of all these grooves and marks, which you kind of actually want. My favorite, of course, is the paint that I'm using that's listed in the description below because everything I put down 
will remain. There won't be any shrinking. There won't be any fading. It is going to be as I make it right now. Gotcha. So do you guys see how I'm loading on the right and stroking to the left and I can go back and mix how this tool is like, this is a lot like frosting a cake. I'm gonna get some quinacridone and maybe work some like right side here. So I'm gonna load on the left side a bit, a little bit on the left side and I'm gonna grab my white. Now, as I paint, this painting, especially in abstract paintings, probably will not be a carbon copy of our example. I am using it as a little roadmap to think about design and format, and all those rules are still going to apply. You know, if you just make little crazy circles, then you're going to have a painting with little crazy circles. So you definitely want to be mindful about like where you're putting color. Remember that dark colors are heavier and have weight and light colors are light and are airy and that warm colors pull forward and cool colors push back. So warm colors are the yellows, reds, and oranges and cool colors are the blues and greens and purples. Simple, isn't that yeah. simple? Sometimes we make these little things so complicated it can feel really inaccessible when you're new to painting. I'm going to load up a bunch of my quinacridone. You can see I'm doing a left side load. So that means I'm gonna come and stroke up. This is just a little something that I do. How is everybody doing? This is amazing. I really, really like watching the palette knife work. I so, love this. And you're putting a lot, of, there's a lot, so much dimensionality to this. this. This is the joy of palette knife painting. The way that the paint, the fact that I'm letting it mix on the canvas, I'm allowing the, the knife to create strokes and effects. I'm gonna get a lot more quinacridone on here and come in here and make a little, I feel like a little space that I'm putting here. And see, I'm just covering the canvas, like frosting a cake, right? So this tip, if you're thinking, look, it's subtractive or additive. Now, one thing you might not know about a palette knife is you can offload the paint by pushing down very, very, very hard. And that actually sort of cleans the knife and reload every little bit of paint you have to the edge. I'm gonna just show you a technique here. And then you can touch your knife if you need to, to the canvas, leaving that little bit of pigment. You can make textures. You guys see how that's done? That's sort of the foundation of like, when you're trying to be more objective in your palette knife painting, that's how you might get there. I'm gonna grab a little more of the yellow. I'm gonna load to the right side a bit. And I'm gonna just come here and filling in because I'm gonna just fill in this whole canvas. I think there's a lot of great, great palette knife projects out there and it's just good to know what everything is and how all the tools work. And you can use any of these tools to paint with. I wiped off, by the way, you might not have seen it, I was changing color into my blues and purples and I kind of wiped off because I didn't want the contrasting colors to work together because I want to keep this very saturated and bright. So I'm going to get a little of my blue and a little bit of my purple and a ton of my white. I'm going to just make this wonderful mix. See, as I get into the mix, it changes the the way that the paint is laying out. I'm gonna put a lot more white out. You can paint pretty realistically in palette knife and you can paint very abstractly in palette knife. They are a fun set of tools and they make really specific marks that I think people can respond to very positively and I find is a practice of painting See, as I go deeper into that mix, it'll start putting down the darker color. So if I want to lighten it up, I got to go get some white like this. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? The way that's bent over the roll. Yeah. It's just so pretty. I'm going to just keep putting that on. So how is everybody doing today while I'm filling in this little blue area? Really, really good. This palette knife painting is something that I think everybody's really excited to try. So th th this is... This is really interesting. I, like how how the the palette knife is able to lay down all that thick texture and yeah. create all of those little uh, peaks like, and things. You can do something where you push the palette knife in and pull it out, and look at the texture it leaves. Oh yeah, that's a thing you'll see artists doing on purpose is creating this type of texture 
Yep. In a painting. Look at that. Isn't yep. that interesting? I couldn't yeah. stop doing it. Fallon was asking here. Hi, Fallon. How are you doing today? So, 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 do you use a heavy hand with a palette knife or a smooth wrist movements? So what I try to do is, um, honestly, I think the cake frosting analogy is, is if you press your frosting down too hard on a cake, right, what happens? You crush your cake. But if you don't get enough connection to the cake, the, the, that little top layer starts to peel up and then you got all the little crumbly bits in there. And you start wondering how those cake bosses do it. So there's a real balance in how, like, you're pressing in for your result. Um, you know, if you're tapping, I do that lightly. But you're, if you're scraping, you can come in really hard. You can do both. Um, if you haven't done this before, I would definitely say tap back to your last case, cake frosting experience and help that inform you while you're in the learning space, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what what else you would do. Oh, cement. It's not like you know how you do cement on bricks. Hmm. Now there was this was this similar deal. So I'm gonna uh, get some more Zoe yellow and asking, some more white. Did did you you know, uh, ha, you know are you using a reference photo for this? Or are you or did you do have, as? Oh, this? I just made up a painting. Yeah. And I'm just kind of using it again um, to sort of inform my composition. But I probably as I paint this. Because every time I work with the knife, right, I might get different value sets that come out. Um, and I may look at this and say, you know, this needs, this needs a light area right here. And then as I balance that out, I may come back and say, wow, I need to change elements of this composition up. Like, I didn't have this specific texture in here in the first one, but I really like it. So I'm probably going to leave that. So you may find that you evolve your work. Mm -hmm. I'm going to likely keep... This area up here sort of light, get darker through here, and then drop my pops of color in a really wonderful structural way, like there's a distant city or something shimmering off in the distance is probably what I will be thinking about. Hmm. Um, there's not really a right or wrong. There are techniques to learn and there are skills to master, but the process of the painting, what you're getting out of it, that's really all about you. And uh... I'm going to get a darker color. I think I need some quinacridone and some dioxane. John's got the picture and picture up, I think, for you guys. I, I don't I know. I'll pull it up for you. I just no, no, it's okay. No, that's, okay. this is perfect. I think we should paint with this fresh. You guys kind of saw the direction we're going. We normally do picture in picture. I think painting with things fresh sometimes because here I want you to release expectations. Do you see how heavy that dark color is right there? Yeah. This is what I mean by heavy. It, your eye is drawn to it. Whenever you hear an artist talk about that is heavy. What they're really saying is that your eye is drawn to it. It pulls the viewer's gaze. When they're talking about something being light, it is calming and restful to the viewer's gaze. That's what they mean by that. This is just crazy art terms that we use when we're trying to talk about all the stuff we do. I'm going to actually rotate this yep. because I like to have a good angle and my easel has a lip and it can interfere with my ability to paint. So I flip this over upside down. And I'm going to keep going. I'm not even going to rinse. I'm going to get some purple and some blue. And I'm going to come and start to create this darker space down here. I might even come over. Look at this. I'm going to come oh, really nice. slightly over the top. Look what I can do here, picking just the peaks of that paint I made earlier, making that amazing texture. I don't know if you can zoom in on that amazing texture. Is that good there? Yeah. See that? That's just by going very lightly. This is a really great space to sit there and think about how much, I'm going to get a smidge of white. Whenever you have a dark color, but you want to reveal some of it, if you get a smidge, and I mean, look how little I'm getting, just a smidge of this white into it. When you place it down, all the colors in your knife will start to be revealed. But I'm going to make sure that that little hole there is covered. You've also got to realize that then that's lighting, lightening that space. Right. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. So how do you how do you balance creating this sort of loose interpretive design without making it look childish? Um All right, how do I do that? Because sometimes I still feel it looks childish. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I mean, like I so I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in here. Normally I ask these Let questions. Let me think for about that. I'm very complimented. Um when I'm doing work that's less objective, I lean back on the fundamentals of design, um, the way that objects relate to each other. So like I keep mentioning, like 
dark objects pull the eye. When we layer things over each other, it implies that that layer is further back. Colors that are muted are further away. The way we try to keep our eye on the canvas and not send our viewer's eye just shooting off into the st like sky, never to see the painting again. You don't want to be like at a show exhibiting your work and have all of your dark lines go one direction. It just shoots your viewer right over to the painting next to it that they bought. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've loved watching Cinnamon paint all these years and having, having <laughs> the luxury of doing this. What I can say is that the big difference is that her intention, her mm -hmm. intention is what makes it different than what children do because children don't have the intention to view, make the viewer see or feel something. Well, they do. They just may not have the but skill not, set yet. Not a sophisticated way. Yeah. And so sometimes I swear it's more honest. <laughs> but that's true. I would say Spider and Luna have put some really, really good abstract honest like paint. Sorry about that. That's okay. I'm going to take this pink color that I'm feeling right now and I'm going to come sort of into this space and I'm going to pull it carefully down this way. And I may even, in an effort to keep things balanced, right? Yeah. I'm going to come here and see I've got all these lines going this way, but I want to break that. Ooh. So I'm creating a sense of like a vertical space here. So I'll just pull across here. And when you're doing this with me, remember the mix on your palette might be slightly different than mine. And so how the paint offloads won't be exactly, exactly. And it shouldn't be. That would be weird and also impressive. <laughs> I don't really know how I'd feel about that. That would be a lot of feelings I would have. I'm getting a little pink, and I'm going to lighten up the middle of this canvas quite a lot with my white paint. That's another thing, is that lean into the art, into the painterliness of this. Yes, I would definitely say don't overwork. Like if I kept going back and back and back over this, this beautiful moment oh, yeah. would be lost. It's so good. Look at that. That's just, I mean, like... So I have to be very careful how I approach any section of the painting because every mark, every color added impacts its composition. Artists that work in this space a great deal, right, have a wonderful way of being able to, with very little, tell you a whole lot about their intention for you as a viewer. Mm. Lords yeah. thinks that's a good idea. She would love to have a, a lesson on composition. <laughs> She's like, please more, Sherpa. Oh, gosh. Like it? I wish I could give you my rev, my oh. reverend tally. Yeah. Reverend Tally, and he's awesome. Just, but, you know, I think in today's climate... <laughs> Still. It might be rough for some people. Art See teacher. how that girl's skirt draws the eye? <laughs> that would be a very heavy line. <sighs> oh, college life. So I've added some white, and I'm trying to create some space here. Now I'm going to just tap my knife into this a little bit. And that, look, that pulls texture across here. Look at that. Wow. So I'm just making these little moments. Sometimes, uh, especially in um, abstract art, they will refer to this as passages. I actually have an artist that I am super passionate about mm -hmm. that I think is, gosh, one of the greats of her generation. Uh, and she's on YouTube. And she does... Some, I mean, it's not YouTube exciting. It's just some of the greatest art information ever. Michelle Thurberg. Oh. Right? So if you're loving this and you want to know more things about passage and this terminology and this type of thinking, she did an entire thing where she put a whole show together and just talked every day about how that happened. And guess what? She canvases go wrong. She did right there in the middle of the show. She's like, I don't know. I'm going to have to see how it works out in a couple of days. Hmm. Maybe it'll be saved. Maybe it won't. Who knows? I shouldn't have poured so fast. She just really is very present in that. So that's another really great resource that's highly, highly informed on the acry acrylic media to uh, enjoy. Yeah, Janice really likes the likes the idea of all of this, but doesn't isn't sure that she understands exactly the point of doing abstract paintings. It, oh. You know, but really likes the process and likes the idea of doing it. Does that make sense? That makes so much sense. And that is the eternal argument in art, isn't it? What's the point of abstract? Seriously, that is people, people have some strong feelings about that. Um, my takeaway after study and after living and observing artists that worked in the abstract realm and observing myself when I worked in that, I believe that abstract 
lets us strip away the illusion of the objective. In other words, I can tell you that this is a beautiful day by simply painting a beautiful day. I can give you an amazing sun and I can put some lovely arrangement in it and I can construct for you a beautiful day. But what if we wanted to just talk about how we felt about the day? Not, I don't want to impose on you what a beautiful day is. I want to talk to you about the feeling, the esoteric feeling, metaphysical feeling of a beautiful day. Abstract then gives us a language to start talking about those things that don't necessarily exist in matter and form, but exist as consciousness. So that's a little heavy, but that's my takeaway. No, I think that's really good. <laughs> so that's where I live. That's not the only answer. People have opinions and they write papers and there's been some beautiful stuff observed. Um, the Vlog Brothers did, uh, so, is it them or is it, they're somehow associated with um, a really amazing art channel. Uh, if one of my mods knows what it is, they're oh, yeah, they totally welcome to drop the link. That's okay. Oh, those, those guys are involved in a bunch of incredible, incredible uh I've uh, grabbed my, my blue and my purple and a little white as I come across here to reveal this space. Oh, I like that stroke. This is a mid-pressure stroke, and that's the result that I get. Including the I... Internet Creators Guild, which you should be a part of if you're an Internet creator. <laughs> Just plugging <laughs> our friends out there at the Internet Creators Guild. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's a fantastic channel, and, they, and they've done some really good work on, you know, this and really helped. Um, I think that channel is about helping everyday people right yeah. understand how abstract work and paintings that are worth a gazillion but a bazillion dollars might possibly relate to their experience in any way and, you know, and, uh, i'm just pulling this back i see this beautiful moment and so taking advantage of that i'm going to pull it back focusing mostly on the tip and look what i got oh wow i saw that it was just Isn't that fun like, this is an opportunity for you to be present in what's happening with your paint and your canvas. Yeah. Uh, and the show was the art assignment. Art assignments. Fantastic. Fantastic program on art. And I have to tell you, there's good ones and there's bad ones. <laughs> out there in the world on regular TV and in, uh, oh, I'm gonna just go heavily blue here, I think. I'm gonna move this through, as you can see, and I'm, I'm making almost like this geode effect. It really is neat. Oh, wow, that what it just did there on the end? Yep. I wish I could zoom in even more. I can't, there's soon, no more zoom. Soon, we'll do this more ah. when we get the new cameras. More zoom. Okay, so guys, we're actually really nearly almost done. I'm going to remove this paint, and I'm going to create a skin. Ooh. Now. How are you doing that? A palette knife painting can take up to two weeks or more to dry. You don't want to be doing like a varnish for a while. You don't want to be like really working with this for a minute. Even in acrylic paint, it is designed. I'm going to tell you something. A bunch of oil artists are going to yell at me, but a very smart conservators with PhDs told me this, so I believe it is true. And honestly, my experience, I feel it is true. Um, oil paints were never designed for palette knife. They should not be squirted out in copious amounts blah, all over the canvas because of the way that they dry and age over time. They become more rigid. They're more prone to crazing or cracking. Um, acrylic paint is really made for this. This is, this is this medium's jam. Right. And whereas an oil painting with a very thick paint could be years, and I'm not even kidding, wet. Well, I mean, <laughs> this will be dry in a few weeks enough to varnish, which is extraordinary. You can work big and it honestly isn't as expensive as the oil paint. No shade to you oil painters because you know, guys, I love you. I love you. I'm going to dry this. All right, so that's why that. I'm making a skin so that I can stick the next layer on. I just need it just tacky enough to do this light work I'm about to do and then we're going to be done. Wasn't this a fun, easy day? Yeah. So like she said, she's just throwing that on there. Uh, low heat, mostly air, just to help... Uh, get a, a, a skin to form over that. You don't want to use the heat because that can cause uh, shrinking and cracking um, on, on especially uh, lower cost paints. So just because the, you know, they, don't, uh, they don't put as many of the, the things in there that help prevent that, that cracking and shrinking under, uh, under heat conditions. So, the, uh, so check that out. 
the um as she said acrylics are really really well designed for this thick thick impasto stuff they're they're a function of modern chemistry so uh, they're able to lay down real thick layers and 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 lay out like this so uh, don't don't forget to ex don't don't feel uh, afraid to experiment and show us I love to love to see these things these are some of my favorite paintings um, just like I was like zooming in there man I mean gosh you can see some cool cool stuff on these kinds of palette knife paintings and uh, I really highly suggest you guys try this at home it's so good it looks so cool um, so definitely give this a try. Post up those pictures. Check in the description below. You'll find a link to our website, all of the uh, uh, all of the material references are there for you, uh, along with a link to our website where you can find all the other cool stuff that we do and interesting stuff about you know just, we do. That is just good. Not, just in time for me to run out of things to say. Really? All right. I'm gonna very carefully because this isn't dry, guys. This is just tacky. This is gonna allow me just to work my surface now. At this stage, I want you to look at your painting um, and love it like a newborn baby, right? We all love, love our it. newborn babies, no matter how rough the, the delivery. So, you know, look at your newborn baby here and take in and feel. I know that's really, really feely, feely, feely. And I'm, I, you know, come from California, so maybe I embrace this easier. But, you know, take it in and feel it. So for me... I have here a really lovely, like, landscape, skittyscape, cityscape, and I want to create the feeling of this distant, rippling, far-off, hot desert effect. This is where my headspace was at. I'm going to see if I can get back into that. And I'm going to use a secret weapon, an abstract painting, which is a pop of color. Ooh. Now, in art, whether it is highly representational super realism or an abstract, a pop of color is a method that an artist can create spectacular dynamic interest within their painting. Van Gogh was a huge fan of this. And that's just what that is, is like nowhere else have I used any teal. There's not even mixed teal here. It is unexpected and visually new to the entire canvas. And so it's going to tell my brain that this is something special in this space. I'm going to grab, maybe this time I'll get my longer blade. You can do this all with the diamond. I'm just going to show you guys the longer blade. And I'm going to grab some of this teal, and I'm going to load on the left-hand side, right? And I'm going to try to create this feeling of a, of a city. But it's, have you ever seen, like, things in the desert, the way that they ripple? So I'm going to just try to see the ripple. And I might imply a bit of a structure. One thing that you can do, and I didn't do the first one, but I realize it's a nice thing to show you. When you're trying to talk about structures, by creating lines and things that are structured, it can create that feeling that people are looking at something more substantial, like those cross lines. So, you know, be, be open to that. Be, be into that. I'm going to come up. And there's the below ripple. Can you guys start to see it? I know <laughs> a lot of you might be like, it's a green blob. And I'm not upset at that because once I've created the piece, my relationship to it has, has found its resolution. Uh, your response um, to it is really all about you and doesn't have that much to do with me. <laughs> so <laughs> it doesn't hurt my feelings at all. In any way, I'm going to add just a little bit down here. I kind of made that little movement. And I think I'm happy with that. I've created that little drama of color. Wow. Well, like, right at 30 minutes, man. You just, like, bang. And if you guys like this, I would love to come back and do more of these. Let me know in the comments below. Would you like to see a primary abstract? Would you like to see a random color abstract where I pick two colors and use white? Um, do you want to learn about different types of color theory? So just let me know what you're interested in because this is something that is not only relaxing for me, but it's enjoyable and I think it will be beneficial to you even if you're a person that just wants to paint that beautiful day as objectively as you can. There are lessons here. We as artists have lessons we can learn from each other no matter what our practice is or where we are in our journey. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.
John mentioned that I didn't talk about signing. So we're back. Here's the signing thing. Here's the biz on this. In completely non-objective work, it is my opinion, this is a biased opinion, but based on experience, that this type of work should not be signed on the front. And the entire thinking behind this is then I have taken away the viewer's right to experience the work and determine its space for themselves. Now you can sign on the back. Um, sometimes artists sign on stretchers. And of course you can sign on the front. But that's my two cents. And that's why this piece is going to be signed on the back after it's dry and the show is done. But I didn't mention it too, so I just wanted to let you know why it was done that way. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now be good to yourselves and be good to each other. And we'll see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>